Hey guys, what's going on? It's Dave from Evil Eye Games. Today's video, we're going to go ahead and we're going to start setting up our project and creating all the necessary files that we're going to need. And I'm also going to go over and explain the different types of files and what they specifically do and why we're using them and why we're not using them. So to begin with, we're going to have to create a new project. And as I mentioned in the intro video before, we're using 4.15.1. I would highly recommend that if you are following this tutorial in the future that you use the same version. You can use newer versions, but you must be aware that some things will change over time with the engine. So as you're going through the project with a newer version, you may find issues with changes in the names of functions that we're calling upon. And you may find that there are slight to significant differences. So in order to keep things pretty straightforward, I'd highly recommend sticking with the version 4.15. All right, so in order to create a new project here, uh, in the launcher, we're gonna go down to the library tab on the left-hand side here. And if you don't already have a version of the engine installed, you're gonna see a grayed out box like this. And you can select the drop down here and select the appropriate version and then just click on the install button. It will then go ahead and download that version of the engine and install it. And once it's complete, you'll see something like here on the left where we have a blue box with a launch button. And once that's finished, it's gonna give us the Unreal Project browser and the first tab will be projects that are existing and the second tab will be new projects. So I'm gonna click on the new projects tab and we're gonna create a blank project. We wanna build everything from scratch. And we can come down here. Uh, you're gonna see that there's some settings for these. The desktop console, the first option here is going to be the target hardware that you're creating the game for. So we're gonna leave it as desktop console. We then have a target graphical quality setting. We're gonna set it to maximum quality. Finally, we have a starter content and for this, I'm going to include the starter content just in case we want to use it. And then down below, you can direct where you want the game to be saved. So I have a separate drive with a game folder that I save all my stuff to. And we can give the project a name. So for this project, I'm just going to call it the TPS Tutorial. You can name the project whatever you like. It really doesn't matter. And then we're going to go ahead and create the project by clicking on the create project button. And once the engine finishes creating the project, you'll be brought to a screen like this. And one of the very first things that I like to do is down below in the content browser here under the add new button, there is a button to show or hide the sources panel. I like to click on that so we get a nice little tree so we can look at the files in our project. Now I'm going to go ahead and start creating the folder structure. So I'm going to select the content folder and I'm going to right click and create a new folder. And we're going to call this our blueprints. And inside of our blueprints folder here, I'm going to right click on that and we're going to create a new folder. And we're going to call this character. And I'm gonna create another folder inside of the blueprints. So I'll right click on that, new folder. And I'm gonna call this our game files. Lastly, I wanna create one last folder. So I'm gonna click on the content folder and we're gonna right click new folder and we're gonna call this maps. So basically, we're going to have a folder here for all of our Blueprint classes. And we're going to have subfolders in there for the different types of Blueprints that we're going to create. And we're going to have a Maps folder here. And we're going to store all of our maps inside of this Maps folder. So to figure out what kind of files we need to create for our game, I'm going to go up to the top here and we're going to go to Edit. And we're going to go to Project Settings. And it's going to bring up a window like this. So I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to find it here, the maps and modes under project. And I'm going to click on that. And what we're going to see here is at the first 
major section we have here, there's a default modes and we have a game mode base. Now we're gonna to wanna to create our own game mode. So let's go ahead and in our game files folder here, I'm gonna right click, we're gonna create a new blueprint by selecting blueprint class. And there's gonna be a game mode base button here. Now, if you end up searching through the classes, if you click the drop down here next to all classes and search for game mode, if I can spell correctly, you'll see that there is a game mode and a game mode base. The differences between these two is that the game mode base is a more basic version of the game mode. And the game mode itself, the not game mode base, is going to be more akin to multiplayer. Now I've said it before and I'll say it until my ears bleed, but if you're newer to the engine, you do not want to start with multiplayer. So I'm just going to be using the game mode base. So I'm going to click on that game mode base button and it's going to create a new blueprint inside of our file structure here. And we can go ahead and name it. So I'm just going to call this our BP underscore TPS underscore game mode. And throughout this tutorial, I'm going to use a specific naming convention where I'm going to start off with the type of file underscored by the game that we're creating underscored by the type of file that we're creating. And right off the bat, I want to go ahead and address naming conventions. Now, the first thing you should know about a naming convention is that it doesn't matter. If you don't like my naming convention, or if you want to use your own naming convention, that's perfectly fine. That has no relevance on anything whatsoever. What a naming convention does is it creates a standardized way of naming files. With Unreal Engine, there isn't really that much of a naming convention that exists. There's a couple of files that people have put together out there on naming conventions, and some of these actually vary quite wildly in the way that they name their files. Really, the only purpose to having a naming convention is so that anybody who works on the project can look quickly at the name of the file and understand what it is and what it does off the bat. So if for some reason you felt the need to name all blueprints with a naming convention of Froggy, as long as everybody working on that project understands that froggy means a blueprint, you're perfectly fine. So for this file, it's a blueprint. So it's gonna start out with BP, and then I put an underscore, and then for the third person shooter, I put in the TPS, and then for the type of file, it's a game mode. So once we go ahead and create this game mode here, I'm gonna click on the save all button. It's gonna prompt me to save our content, so I'm gonna hit save selected. And if we go into our project maps and modes here for the default game mode, I can hit the drop down and we'll see our BP underscore TPS game mode. So we can go ahead and click on that. And I'm going to click on the drop downs here. And underneath default game mode, you're going to see selected game mode. I'm going to hit the drop down next to that. And these are the different kind of files that are dependent on the game mode. Now the game mode file itself basically determines how a player enters the game and what they use when they're inside of the game. In the case of something like a multiplayer, it would determine what kind of character they spawn in as, as well as a few other things which we're going to highlight right here. Now the first thing we have on our list here is the default pawn class. And the default pawn or the default character is going to determine when the player's character is spawned the character or pawn that they're gonna take control of, this is gonna determine what class it's gonna be. So when we go ahead and we actually create our character, we're gonna set our default pawn class to the character we create. We haven't created that yet, so we can't really set that. Underneath that, we have a HUD class. And the HUD class is basically a way of displaying things on screen. Now there's an older version of showing things on screen and there's the newer version. I'm not going to really be putting together a complete HUD package for over the course of this tutorial. I want to actually do that separate so it can be applied to a multitude of games. And if there's somebody looking for a way to create a menu system or a HUD system, 
they can do that on their own without having to follow this tutorial. But basically what I use the HUD class for is controlling what is displayed on the screen. So since we're not going to be using that, we're not going to have to really set it. We can leave it at the default for the moment. Underneath that, we have a player controller class. And the important thing to understand about the player controller is that it is an interface between the player themselves playing the game and the pawn class that they're using or the character class that they're using. So it acts in between the engine and the character class. Now, for simpler games, you don't even have to worry about a controller class. For more complex games where the control schemes get very complex, it might be beneficial to actually use a controller class. For our purposes, we're going to be putting the controls directly in the pawn class or the character class that we end up creating. So we're not really going to use a controller class. Right below that, we have a game state class. And the game state class is basically used to track progress throughout the game. So during the course of level, if you're keeping track of a score or you're keeping track of objectives, whether they've been met, you're going to keep that in the game state class. Right below that, we have the player state class. And this is more useful in multiplayer. And the fact that the player state class is going to save information about the player itself, whether or not their pawn or their character gets destroyed. So, for example, if you're doing something like a Call of Duty or a Battlefield, when the player dies, their pawn or their character is destroyed, and when they respawn, it's recreated. So any information that you are storing in the pawn or the character is basically destroyed as well. But in games like those, you want to keep track of the scores of the players or the amount of kills that the players have accumulated. And you don't want it to be based on the character itself. So in this case, you would store something like that in the player state. So that way, when the player dies and is respawned, you can carry that information over. Now, we're not creating a multiplayer game, so we're not going to need to use that. Lastly, there's the spectator class which is pretty obvious, at least I'd say. And if somebody is spectating a match in multiplayer, you would end up using this spectator class to define how they can move about in the world. Now below that, we're going to head down to our default map section here. And there's an editor startup map and a game default map. Now for the editor startup map, this is going to determine what map is loaded over here when you go ahead and open up your project through the Unreal Launcher. The game default map is going to determine what map is loaded when the player double clicks on the executable and launches the game for the first time. Now right now we're using a minimal default map that comes with the starter content, but we want to create our own map that we can use to test things. So I'm going to go ahead and grab the tab here for the project settings and drag it up to the top and you'll notice that I can lodge it into that top bar. So that way I can switch back over to the main window for our level. And we're going to go to file. We're going to create a new level and we're going to select the default map. And this is going to be more basic than that demo map that we just had open. And we want to go to our file and we want to save current as. And I'm going to put this in our maps folder. So I'm going to select that folder. And for the map name, we're going to go ahead and call this our test map. And I'm just going to hit save. So if we go into our maps folder, you're going to see that we have a test map in there. So I'm going to drag off of this project settings back to the main window here. And I'm just going to resize it. So for our editor startup map, I'm just going to go ahead and select our test map. And for the game default map for the time being, I'm going to select our test map as well. And we're just going to use this level to test out mechanics and make sure that everything works properly. The last thing that I'm going to address is here at the bottom, there's a game instance header. And inside of there, we have a game instance class. Now it's using a default game instance. And what the game instance does is it is created when the engine first starts up and it persists through the entirety of the player playing the game. 
So from the moment that they double click on the executable to the moment they close the game, the game instance exists. So we're gonna go ahead and create our own game instance class. So in our browser here, I'm gonna select our game files. We're gonna right click. We're gonna create a new blueprint class. And in this drop down here for all classes, I'm gonna go ahead and search for game instance. Once again, if I can spell, And we're going to see here that there's a game instance. We're going to go ahead and select that and hit the select button. And once again, we'll be able to name it. So I'm going to call this BP underscore TPS underscore game instance. So now we have a game instance file and we have a game mode file in our game files. So once again, I'm going to click save all and hit save selected. And now if we go into our game instance class and hit the drop down, we're gonna see our custom made BP underscore TPS underscore game instance. So I'm gonna go ahead and select on that. And for the project settings here, there's no save button. It automatically updates a .ini file. So you don't have to hit save or anything to keep these changes. So we're gonna go ahead and close out of our project settings. And at this point, that's gonna complete this video. In the next video, we're gonna start building our character and getting them to move in the world. So if you have any questions about these game files or how any of this works, you can go ahead and comment down below. You can also check over at my Facebook page and follow me over there. I'll leave a link in the description. And as always, guys, thanks for watching.